Grafana plugins are a powerful way to extend Grafana's core functionality. They allow you to create custom features like new data sources, visualizations, or even entire applications. Hi, I'm Tom, one of the developer advocates here at Grafana Labs, and in this video, we'll break down the anatomy of a Grafana plugin, explore the three different types of plugins, discuss their key components, and show you how to structure and organize your plugin for success. Let's start by going over the three primary types of plugins within Grafana, apps, data sources, and panels. Each has its own unique role and components. App plugins offer maximum flexibility and are perfect for creating custom experiences that go beyond visualizations or data interaction. For example, our Kubernetes app offers an out-of-the-box observability experience for monitoring your Kubernetes clusters. Data sources enable Grafana to connect to external services and query data. Examples include Prometheus, MongoDB, and Google Sheets. Panels allow you to create custom visualizations or widgets that can be added to dashboards. These can be things like SVG displays, flow diagrams, or even AI-powered dashboard widgets. Now that you know what kind of plugins are available, let's dive into how plugins are composed. We'll start by discussing the separation of front-end and back-end plugin components. While panel plugins only contain front-end components, app and data source plugins can have a combination of both, so it's important to understand the differences. Front-end components of a plugin are written using TypeScript and typically make use of React. This means they run directly in the user's browser, and importantly, in order to access external services via HTTP requests, you must make use of something called the Grafana proxy. You can find more information on the proxy in our developer documentation. Backend components of a plugin are written using Go, and this code executes on the server side. Since the code is running on the server, you can expose resource handler endpoints, which can serve data to your front end. These are useful when you want to perform some server-side functionality, such as making an authenticated callout to a third-party service and returning the data. In order to support alerting in your data source plugin, you must create a back-end data source. We'll discuss the differences between front-end and back-end data sources a little later. The key takeaway here is that front-end components manage user interaction, while back-end components handle server-side logic and external interactions. Let's take a look at the individual components that make up an app plugin now. Before we discuss the front-end and back-end components, it's important to point out that every plugin, no matter what its type, has a plugin.json configuration file. This is where you'll create all of your plugin's metadata, such as its name, description, icons, screenshots, and any relevant links. All of these will then become available within the plugin catalog. On the front end, pages allow you to create custom pages accessible from Grafana's navigation using React components to create custom user interfaces for your application. Your app can have as many pages as you like, and in advanced use cases, these can even have role-based access control to restrict certain users from accessing certain pages. App plugins often include configuration pages where users can input essential settings like API credentials or other parameters. These are effectively pages that perform the specific role of allowing users to configure your app. UI extensions allow developers to hook into Grafana's core UI, extending it with powerful custom functionality, such as adding additional context menu options or navigation items. Moving over to the backend components now, and developers can define a server-side health check, which can return a success or failure status, which indicates the health of the app. This can be a great way to ensure that your plugin is working correctly and has the appropriate configuration. As we mentioned earlier, apps can handle server-side logic, such as making external API calls or processing data. Resource handlers can be created to expose HTTP endpoints, which can be called by the front end to receive the results of these server-side interactions. And finally, unique to app plugins is the concept of nested plugins. In order to provide a cohesive out-of-the-box experience, you may wish to bundle new data sources or panel plugins in order to create your desired bespoke experience for your app. With app plugins, the possibilities are virtually endless when it comes to creating custom experiences within Grafana. Now let's look at the components that make up a data source plugin. Firstly, on the front end, we have the config editor. This is where users can provide connection details, such as API keys or endpoint URLs for the external service. It's essential for setting up the data source correctly. Next, there's the query editor. 
This is what allows users to construct queries against the connected service. This editor is used when adding a panel to the dashboard, when using Explore, and when creating a new alert rule. The query editor can be customized to provide a code editor or a more bespoke visual query builder. I mentioned earlier that there are both front-end and back-end data source plugins. The distinction lies in the way that the health check and query data functionality is implemented. For front-end data sources, both the health check and query data components live on the front-end and are written using TypeScript. The health check is used to verify that the connection to the data source is working, and it's invoked when the user presses the Save and Test button when configuring the data source. The query data function is the component that actually queries the data source using the user's query, and it's responsible for returning the appropriate data frames, which can then be used by the panel itself. For back-end data sources, the health check and query data components instead run on the server side, and they're therefore written in Go. Back-end data sources can also expose resource endpoints, just like app plugins can. This allows you to run bespoke server-side logic and return them to the front-end via HTTP requests as necessary. Data plugins are all about making external services accessible within Grafana, and these components ensure smooth integration and interaction with your data. Finally, let's take a look at the simplest of the three plugin types, Panels. Panels do not have any back-end components and are solely composed of front-end components. For Panels, there's the Visualization component. This is where you provide the visual representation of query data, or the interface for your widget. The visualization is made up of a React component and can be anything from a simple chart to a complex interactive widget. The panel's render function defines how the data from the data source is passed into the visualization and how updates are handled when data or options change. Then there are the panel options. This allows users to customize the behavior or appearance of the panel plugin. The specific options available must be defined in code and can then be used from inside the panel visualization component. Users are able to modify the values of these options from the panel options on the right-hand side when editing the panel in Grafana. Panel plugins offer a lot of creative freedom, enabling you to build visualizations that can be tailored to each user's needs. Now that we've understood the components that make up each plugin type, let's discuss organizing your plugin files. When you use the Create Plugin CLI tool, it generates a scaffolded folder structure for your project, which consists of various configuration and build files for the project, as well as the source code for the components we just discussed that make up your plugin's functionality. Front-end code lives inside the source directory, and it's written in TypeScript, with key files like the plugin.json and module.ts file. This is where you'll write all of the necessary code for the front-end components that make up your plugin. For example, if you're creating an app plugin, this is where you'll add the pages, configuration, and define any UI extensions that make up your app. For data sources, you'll create the config and query editor React components. You'll also define the health check and query data components if you're creating a front-end data source. And for panel plugins, this is where you'll write the React components that make up the visual element of your panel, as well as define any relevant panel options the user can configure. Backend code lives inside the package directory, and it's written in Go. This is where you'll create your health check and resource endpoints for apps, as well as for backend data sources, along with the query data component. And finally, end-to-end -end tests live inside the tests folder. These are different to your jest unit tests, which typically live alongside your front-end TypeScript code, End-to-end -end tests use a testing framework called Playwright and provide you with the ability to write automated front-end tests. This is important for verifying that your plugin can run correctly across multiple versions of Grafana. For more information on writing and running end-to-end -end tests, see our developer documentation portal. Now that you understand the essential components of a Grafana plugin, as well as how they're structured, we recommend diving into our detailed tutorials, exploring our plugin examples on GitHub, and joining the Grafana community to collaborate with other developers just like you. When you're ready, you can also learn how to publish your Grafana plugin and share your work with the Grafana community. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button to be notified when we release awesome Grafana content just like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.